Welcome to this video explaining critical points and extreme values. In this video, we're going to learn how to find the maximum and minimum values of a function, also known as extreme values. We're also going to learn about local and absolute extreme values. Finding the maximum and minimum values of a function on an interval is useful when solving optimization problems and when drawing the graph of a function by hand. Shown here is a plot of the continuous function y is equal to f of x on the closed interval from a to b. We can think of a continuous function as one which we can draw with a pen on a page with an unbroken line without lifting our pen from the page. When we refer to the closed interval from a to b, we're referring to all of the points between x is equal to a and x is equal to b, as well as the points x is equal to a and x is equal to b. Now looking at the plot to the right, the absolute maximum value of the function is the highest value of the function over its domain. Now that value is shown here, highlighted in red. But when we refer to the domain of the function, we're referring to the set of possible inputs to the function. In this example, we've defined the domain of the function to be the closed interval from A to B. The absolute minimum value of the function is the lowest value of the function over its domain. Now that value is shown here, highlighted in red. A local maximum value of the function is the highest value of the function over some open interval. On the plot to the right, the open interval from the point x is equal to c to x is equal to d is now highlighted with a red line. Now this open interval from c to d is all of the points between x is equal to c and x is equal to d not including the points x is equal to c and x is equal to d. The local maximum value on this open interval is now shown highlighted in red. A local minimum value of the function is the lowest value of the function over some open interval. On this open interval, currently shown highlighted with a red line, there's a local minimum value here, now shown highlighted in red. The absolute maximum value of the function will also be a local maximum value for any open interval that includes that point. For this open interval, currently shown highlighted with a red line, the absolute maximum value of the function is also a local maximum value. Similarly, the absolute minimum value of the function will also be a local minimum value for any open interval that includes that point. For this open interval, currently shown highlighted with a red line, the absolute minimum value of the function is also a local minimum value. These maximum and minimum values are also referred to as the extreme values of the function. We can use derivatives to find these extreme values. The extreme values of a function only occur at the following points. At interior points where the derivative f prime of x is equal to zero, at interior points where the derivative f prime of x is undefined, and at the endpoints. We'll explain this further now. We're referring to the derivative as f prime of x, written f apostrophe x. We could equally refer to the derivative as dy dx. 
f prime of x and dy dx both refer to the derivative of the function with respect to x. When we refer to the endpoints of the function, we are referring to the left endpoint at x is equal to a, now highlighted in red, and to the right endpoint at x is equal to b, now highlighted in red also. And when we refer to the interior points of the function, we are referring to all of the points between x is equal to a and x is equal to b. Extreme values only occur at interior points where the derivative equals zero, at interior points where the derivative is undefined, and at the endpoints. We can simplify this further by introducing critical points. A critical point of a function f is a point in the domain of the function where the derivative is equal to zero or where the derivative is undefined. Using this definition, we can say that the extreme values of a function only occur at critical points and endpoints. As shown to the right is a plot of another function, y is equal to f of x plotted on the closed interval from x is equal to a to x is equal to b. To find the extreme values of a function on an interval, we look for the critical points and endpoints. In this example, the function has three critical points and two endpoints. The first critical point is now shown highlighted in red. At this point, the derivative of the function is undefined. The function's curve has a corner at this point. At points like this, where the function curve has a corner, the derivative is undefined. On the open interval, currently highlighted with a red line, this critical point is a local minimum value. The second critical point is now shown highlighted in red. At this point, the derivative of the function is also undefined. This critical point is a point of discontinuity in the function. The derivative of a function is undefined at points of discontinuity. On the open interval now highlighted with a red line, this critical point is a local maximum value. The third critical point is now shown highlighted in red. At this point, the derivative of the function is equal to zero. This critical point is an absolute minimum value. On the open interval now highlighted with a red line, this critical point is also a local minimum value. This left endpoint currently highlighted, is an absolute maximum value. On the open interval now highlighted with a red line, this left endpoint is also a local maximum value. This right endpoint, currently highlighted, is a local maximum value on the open interval now highlighted with a red line. We will now demonstrate how to find the extreme values of a function in an example problem and solution. We want to find the absolute extreme values of the function y is equal to 6x minus x squared on the closed interval from 0 to 4. This function is plotted on the right of the screen. We can find the largest and smallest values of the function at the critical points and endpoints. The critical points occur where the derivative of the function is equal to zero or is undefined. For this function, on the closed interval from zero to four, there are no interior points where the derivative is undefined. 
There are no points of discontinuity, corners, cusps, or vertical tangents to the function's curve, where the function's derivative would be undefined. We now calculate the derivative of the function and find the points where it's equal to zero. Looking to the right at our function, y is equal to 6x minus x squared, the derivative of 6x with respect to x is 6. And the derivative of minus x squared with respect to x is minus 2x. To find the points where the derivative is equal to 0, we set the derivative to be equal to 0, and then we solve for x. Moving 2x to the other side of the equal sign, we get 6 is equal to 2x. Putting this the other way around, we get 2x is equal to 6. And dividing on both sides of the equal sign by 2, we get that x is equal to 3. The derivative equals 0 and x is equal to 3. This means that the function has a critical point at x is equal to 3. We now solve for the function's value at that point by substituting x is equal to 3 into our function equation. The function value at that point is y is equal to 6 multiplied by 3 minus 3 squared. And this is equal to 18 minus 9, and this is equal to 9. We'll compare this value to the function's values at the endpoints. We now evaluate the function's values at the endpoints. At the left endpoint, y is equal to 6 multiplied by 0 minus 0 squared, and this is equal to 0. At the right endpoint, y is equal to 6 multiplied by 4 minus 4 squared, and this is equal to 24 minus 16, which is equal to 8. Next, we'll compare the function's values at the critical points and endpoints to determine the absolute maximum and minimum values of the function. At the function's critical point at x is equal to 3, at the function's value f of 3 is equal to 9. For the endpoint values, at the left endpoint at x is equal to 0, the function's value f of 0 is equal to 0. At the right endpoint, at x is equal to 4, the function's value f of 4 is equal to 8. The function's absolute maximum value is the highest of these values, and the function's absolute minimum value is the lowest of these values. From these values, the function's absolute maximum value is 9 at x is equal to 3. And the function's absolute minimum value is 0 at x is equal to 0. This concludes our example problem and solution. We'll now learn how functions can fail to have extreme values. Continuous functions on finite closed intervals have maximum and minimum values. Shown to the right is a plot of the continuous function y is equal to 2x on the closed interval from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. When we refer to the closed interval from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2, we're referring to all of the points between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2, as well as the points x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. This continuous function 
on this closed interval has an absolute maximum value of 4 at the point where x is equal to 2. It also has an absolute minimum value of 0 at the point where x is equal to 0. A continuous function on an open interval can fail to have extreme values. As shown now to the right is a plot of the continuous function y is equal to 2x on the open interval from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. When we refer to the open interval from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2, we are referring to all of the points between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2, not including the points x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2. This continuous function on this open interval does not have an absolute maximum value. It also does not have an absolute minimum value on this open interval. Similarly, shown now to the right is a plot of the continuous function y is equal to 2x on a semi-open interval from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. This semi-open interval consists of all of the points between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 2, the points at x is equal to 2, but not including the point at x is equal to 0. This continuous function on this semi-open interval has an absolute maximum value of 4 at the point where x is equal to 2, but it does not have an absolute minimum value on this interval. A point of discontinuity can cause a function to fail to have a maximum or minimum value on a closed interval. As shown to the right is a plot of the function y is equal to 2x for x is greater than or equal to 0 and x is less than 2 and y is equal to 2 for x is equal to 2. Plotted on the closed interval from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. In this example, the function has a point of discontinuity at x is equal to 2. The function does not have a maximum value on the closed interval from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. But the function does have an absolute minimum value of 0 at the point where x is equal to 0. Extreme values only occur at critical points and endpoints. But not every critical point is an extreme value. Shown to the right is a plot of the continuous function y is equal to f of x is equal to x cubed, plotted on the closed interval from minus 1 to 1. The derivative of this function, f prime of x, is equal to 3x squared. This derivative is equal to 0 at the point where x is equal to 0. So, this function has a critical point at x is equal to 0. But, this function does not have an extreme value there. There is no maximum or minimum at the point where x is equal to 0. It's useful to remember that extreme values only occur at critical points and endpoints, but not every critical point is an extreme value. In this video, we've learned how to find the maximum and minimum values of a function, also known as extreme values. Finding the maximum and minimum values of a function on an interval is useful when solving optimization problems and when drawing the graph of a function by hand.
If you found this content useful, please subscribe to the channel to receive more content. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you next video.